following training is sponsored by the Niagara Library System. We serve our member libraries in Niagara, Orleans, and Genesee counties. You can always visit our uh, main web page listed here at Niagara.org, or certainly visit your local library homepage and use your library card to get access to streaming videos, downloadable music, audiobooks, ebooks, and even more from the comfort of your own home. Thank you. Hi, so today's video is on micromanagement. And as can be expected, 99% um, of the articles are on things like how micromanagement is bad, how you can avoid being a micromanager, so on and so forth. Um, so I picked, again, a few of the best articles um, that, that I thought that I saw and we'll summarize them here. The links, as always, are in the description. Please um, feel free, obviously, go and check out the originals. Um, one was by John Hughes on how to avoid uh, micromanaging. Uh, Alyssa Gregory wrote a great thing on effective ways to stop ma micromanaging right now. And the Mind Tools content team actually wrote something on um, not only helping to stop micromanaging, but if you feel as an employee you're being micromanaged, some things that you can do to help mitigate uh, some of that. So um, starting with John Hughes, he writes, an introduction to micromanaging and why it's harmful in the workplace. Uh, simply put, micromanagement is an attempt to control every aspect of an undertaking. This could include supervisor who spends their day watching employees instead of doing their own work, for example. It could also include managers or middle managers who insist on employees uh, completing tasks in a specific way and ignore suggestions for other methods. Many people who micromanage others feel that they are ensuring their employees complete work correctly, improving efficiency and quality of the work done, but it actually does the opposite. Studies show that micromanagement decreases productivity and creativity. Um, so five different signs uh, in the workplace. There are several different warning signs that can alert you to the possibility of micromanagement taking place um, and spotting them can help you eliminate this bad practice. Number one, um, he talks about this is still John Hughes, avoiding um, delegation because you're afraid of mistakes. Many micromanagers believe if you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. Um, this becomes dangerous as the micromanager starts to take on more and more work, not only does this create more stress, it also leaves their employees with little or no work to do. Um, delegation, which is going to be the next video, because delegation is almost always um, talked about as a positive, where micromanagement is almost always talked about as a negative, um, delegation is almost always talked about as a positive. But delegation is a crucial part of communication between bosses and employees that provides an opportunity for bosses to fill in employees on the goals of the business uh, and make sure no, everyone knows the role that they're supposed to play. Uh, number two, letting details bog you down and distract you. Uh, another tendency of micromanagers is to focus too much on the little details and forget about the big picture. Uh, many people like this want every last step done to their specifications and obsessing over the details can distract them from their larger goals. If you're placing too much importance on miscellaneous tasks and then you end up missing your overall goals, in a similar vein, micromanagers tend to place too much emphasis on small tasks. Um, now I talk about such as emails or file organization, of course, that's the entire business with a library. So, you know, not emails, but organization certainly is. So again, take all this with a grain of salt, apply it as you need to. Um, but these day-to-day -day necessities usually have little impact on the larger goals um, of the business. Remember, this is the business side, um, but micromanagers can get hung up on them. Number four, discouraging others from making decisions so you're in control. Uh, micromanagers like to be in control. Part of that is making all the decisions relating to the projects that they oversee. They tend to leave little room for others to exercise decision-making and problem-solving skills and dampening the creativity of the entire group. And this creates time management issues as employees have to engage in a lot of back and forth, whether it's emails or phone calls or meetings with the boss in order to receive input on every small decision. Um, number five, uh, ignoring others' opinions and, and ideas and forcing your own. Um, additionally, micromanagers usually just like hearing others' opinions and ideas and sometimes will even put them down. They tend to believe that their way of doing things is the best way and can miss out on potentially helpful insights um, be, uh, from their employees because of it. Now, Alyssa Gregory um, from the Balance website writes several effective ways to stop yourself from becoming a micromanager. Now, remember, this is not just for higher up bosses, this is for anybody who's actually managing anybody else. You want to try and avoid being a micromanager. 
Um, she says, identify your insecurities, hire the right people, learn to delegate. There's that delegate word again. Let go of perfection and create a strong and dynamic team. Um, this really does start from the top down. It starts with confidence, and confidence comes from practice. So if you don't have all this right away, don't worry about it. It comes from practice. It really does. Um, and of course, like I've got here, all of this is always easier said than done. Um, now, uh, on a final note here, um, from the Mind Tools content team, um, it talks, they talked about actually escaping micromanagement. Um, and they say, as for the micromanage, well, things are a bit more complicated, likely as not. Uh, you're being held back in your professional development, probably not making the progress in your career that you could be if you enjoyed some workplace independence. Um, but there is a certain amount that anybody can do to take responsibility and try to improve the situation. And they talk about uh, help your boss delegate to you, delegate to you more efficiently. There's that delegate word again, more effectively by prompting him or her to give you all the information you need up front um, and then to set interim review points along the way. Okay? Um, and a lot of this actually can be done really informally uh, and should actually probably be done informally. Uh, it, the more you can get the your ideas out um, and maybe help the boss think that the boss actually came up with the ideas, that can be good too. Or vice versa, if you're a boss and the employees think they came up with the idea, then they have more buy-in. So it, this all works for everybody. We can help control our own attitudes in, in certain ways. Um, as an employee, you can volunteer to take on work or projects you're confident you'll be good at. Um, and this will start to increase his or her confidence in you and his or her delegation skills. There's that word. Uh, make sure that you communicate progress to your boss regularly um, to discourage him or her from seeking information just because they haven't heard from you in a while. And concentrate on helping your boss to change one micromanagement habit at a time. Remember, uh, your bosses are only human too, and they are always allowed to make mistakes. Okay? So key points from that, micromanagement does restrict the ability of people to develop and grow. And it also limits what the team can actually achieve because everything has to go through the boss. Uh, when a boss is reluctant to delegate, um, and focuses on details ahead of the big picture and discourages the staff from taking the initiative. There's every chance that he or she is sliding towards micromanagement. And the first step in avoiding the micromanagement trap or getting out of it once you're there is to recognize the danger signs um, by talking to either your staff or talking to your boss. If you're micromanaged, help your boss see that there's a better way of working and um, tactfully, tact timing and tone, good places to start, okay? Uh, if you are a micromanager, work hard on those delegation skills and trust your staff to develop and deliver. Thanks, we'll see you in the next